Hi, I'm Rose from upstate New York. Please like and subscribe. I grew up with my grandfather, who was the coolest person ever. He worked at a planetarium nearby, and often after school, I'd help him there. You see that star? You know, it isn't a star, but a planet. A planet? It's so shiny. Wow. Growing up, I loved everything about the stars, planets, and space. Pops and I would look at the stars from the big telescope. It was so fun. By the time I was 17, I was the brightest in my class and ready to graduate a year early. One time when I returned from school, I saw Pops talking to some construction workers, and he looked mad. What's happening? These people are trying to tear down the planetarium to build a mall here. No way! Not on my watch! This place was too close to my heart. My best childhood memories were about this place. Just then, I noticed a bulldozer driving toward the building, so I climbed up the huge oak tree in between, and people frantically yelled for the machines to stop. Yo, stop! There's a crazy girl up there! Rose, what are you doing? Get down from there! Nope! If they want to take this tree down, they'll have to do it with me on it! One of the workers called the boss, and exactly 30 minutes later, I saw a helicopter land. Several men in black suits jumped out, surrounding a handsome guy who didn't look much older than me. You, girl, what's the problem? Call me Rose, and the problem is that you need to ask your men to back off. This is our property. I bought this dump, so it's my property. So, you'll just destroy it because you own it? Over my cute body. Do you have any idea who I am? Does it look like I care? The guy stared at me, then smirked. You won't give up, will you? Nope. Fine. Come to the office tomorrow, and uh, we'll have a little chat. I'll think about it. Saying that, he left, and so did the workers. That was fast. Later that night, Pops told me the guy's name was Henry Hampton, and his parents owned half the city. I wasn't scared of him, even if he was the President of the United States. And the next morning, when I reached his office, I was more than ready to let him know that. But the place was so big, I couldn't figure out which door to open. I accidentally entered the wrong room and found a boy my age playing the piano. But he sounded a bit off. Try working with an F minor. It's much smoother. Excuse me? I wanted to apologize for butting in. But before I could, a security guard came and escorted me to another office where Henry was waiting for me. And he looked so intimidating. Our meeting yesterday had me rethink the mall project. But on one condition, I want you to work as my assistant. What? Why? I've had many pretty assistants over the years. Now, I want a smart one. Did he just call me ugly? But I'm a space nerd. There really isn't much I can do here. Why don't we start you off at uh, $4,000 a day and leave the rest to me? Okay, that was a lot. Henry stared at me, waiting for an answer. My gut screamed no, but what choice did I have? It was either this or lose the planetarium, and no way I was going to let that happen. Ugh, fine. The entire next week, I regretted my decision every second. Henry was mean, rude, and a total brat. He made me skip classes and called me at the oddest hours for work. If I refused, he made me number all the empty white sheets in the printer. What a nightmare! To top it all off, I was asked to help with all the new transfer students at school. And one of them caught my attention instantly. The piano guy. When he entered the class that day, girls couldn't stop staring at how handsome he was. I'm Rose. Noah, you work for my brother, right? You're Junior Hampton? Ding ding. And you're the brave girl I've heard so much about. Pleased to meet you. Noah was the complete opposite of Henry. He was kind and friendly, and we started hanging out every day. I complained to him about Henry all day long, and he didn't seem to disagree. He told me they were half-brothers and never got along. He's just jealous I'm the better-looking brother. One night, as Noah was playing his latest tune for me, Henry barged in looking mad. I lost an important deal because you mixed up the papers. I thought I was hiring a genius, but I was so wrong. I looked at him in shock, and he went ballistic on me. Hold up. I didn't ask you for this job. I'm tired, exhausted, and you're just so ungrateful. If you want me out, I'll leave. But I won't take your sour attitude. Henry looked crazy with rage, and before he could react, Noah jumped in. Easy, Henben. I'm sure we can work something out. Stay out of my business. Understood? Saying that, he stormed out of the room, and Noah turned to me. 
Thanks for standing up for me. I won't let him bully you, as he bullies me. Such a bozo. Just then, Noah came a bit closer, and my tummy did a wild spin. Do you want to maybe get dinner sometime? Like a date? Yeah. How does 8 p.m. tomorrow sound? <laughs> Sounds perfect. I wanted my first date ever to be amazing. I bought a cute dress and did a little makeup too. But just an hour before I had to leave, Henry texted me to get his dry cleaning. Can it wait? Unless you want to fly to Korea to deliver it, I suggest you get going. Did he have a tracker on me that rang every time I was unhappy? I texted Noah that I'd be late and hurried to the shop. But on my way back, it started raining heavily and I got completely soaked. I slid my way into the house and saw Henry glaring at me. I missed my meeting, thanks to you. I missed a date, thanks to you. Achoo! He wrapped his jacket around me as I sneezed like a crazy person and asked one of his servants to take me to the guest room. When I came down, he was standing by the fireplace with a cup of cocoa. Drink this. You'll feel better. You made this? Do you see anyone else around? Why was he suddenly being so nice to me? And why did that make me feel so good? So, about this boyfriend. Who is he? I don't have a boyfriend. And why do you want to know? Just wondering. Well, don't, because you're killing my chances of ever finding someone. Henry laughed, and he almost looked human. One heck of a good-looking human. What made you say that? I was all set to meet no- Oh my god, Noah! I totally forgotten to tell him that I won't be able to make it. I reached for my phone, but it wasn't working. So I pulled one out of Henry's pocket and frantically dialed Noah. But he was already standing behind, looking like a raging bull. Well, well. Look at that. Noah, I'm so sorry. I totally for- Save it, Rose. It's not the first time Henry's had eyes on my girl. Henry looked at me in surprise. He was your date? Well, that's disappointing. Before I could say anything, Noah took the vase lying on the table next to him and flung it at Henry who missed it by inches. That was totally uncalled for. Work on your aim, little guy. But Noah left without saying a word. When I turned to Henry, he was smiling. You're such a jerk. I stomped out of the house furious at Henry. For days after that, I tried to talk to Noah, but he continued to ignore me. One day, the teacher announced that I was chosen to represent my school at the annual quiz competition, and I got busy with my books. I was studying in Henry's office one night after finishing work when I completely lost track of time and snapped back to over 30 missed calls from Pops. As I rushed down the hall blindly, I missed a turn and bumped right into Henry. You're still here? Uh, I was just leaving. Now? It's late. Let me drop you back. Don't you want to change? Should I? I blushed and we walked to his car. We sat in the back seat and minutes into the ride, I dozed off. I woke up to Henry brushing his hands over my cheeks, pushing a strand of hair away. His eyes were the most perfect combination of blue and green. Sorry. Don't be. I enjoyed your snoring. I don't snore. I must be really tired, I guess. You work too hard. Take the day off tomorrow. Why do you do this? What? Be nice one second and an absolute moron the next. Henry looked straight into the mirror before turning toward me with a stern look. Maybe that's just who I am, a boring moron. But you, you're nothing like I imagined. He leaned forward and I thought he was about to kiss me. I literally stopped breathing when he took a bottle lying next to me. He totally did that on purpose. When I got back home, I felt my heart beating hard. This was wrong. But why did it feel so right? A week later in school, I was doing some last minute preparations in the library when I got stuck on an annoying question. My concentration was all over the place. I could solve that in under 15 seconds. I almost screamed when I felt Noah's hand on my shoulder and I was annoyed to see him. Now you wanna talk to me? Give me that. He took the notebook out of my hand and started scribbling something <gasps> and got the answers right. How? I'm the lesser known genius in the family. I am so sorry about the other day, Noah. Don't worry about it. Let's hang out for ice cream after school and we can talk. Sure, I'd love that. Noah volunteered to help me with the quiz and I agreed. We would study till late at night and I would often catch him stealing glances at me. When the final day of the quiz arrived, I was more than prepared to get that trophy home. And I did, along with a massive cash prize, which was enough to put me through college. Thank you for helping me. I couldn't have done this without you. I would do anything for you, Rose. I like you, and I think we should give us another shot. He looked at me with so much hope, but I couldn't do it. 
I like you too, Noah, but not in the way that you want me to. It's never gonna work out between us. Because of Henry? What do you even see in him? Noah's words made me realize what I'd been hiding from all this while, but I was too stubborn to accept it. No, it's not him. I have to work hard for my future and I can't afford distractions. Noah looked at me heartbreakingly and left. After that day, I realized the whole thing was getting messier by the day. I decided on talking to Henry about it, but when I met him a few days later, he had something waiting for me. I'm leaving for Korea. You are coming. What? No. Listen, Henry, I have to talk to you. Just think of it as this one last thing before you leave. I'll let you go as soon as we're back. He was nothing but a pain in my butt, and I should be happy this was finally getting over with. Only I wasn't. If anything, it broke my heart. We flew the next day early in the morning in Henry's private jet, and he took me to a house in the city. I entered to see an old lady lying on the bed, and she lit up when she saw him. Henry sat next to her holding her hand while I watched him from a distance. He looked so tender, and it made me fall for him even more. When I found him alone, I asked him who she was. My grandmother. I lost my dad when I was a kid, and she's all I have. What about your stepdad and Noah? They're my mom's family, not mine. He looked so vulnerable, and I don't know why, but I felt like hugging him. I know how you feel. My granddad is my only family too. Looks like we have more in common than we thought. He placed his hands on mine, and I suddenly felt so close to him. I was in love. I knew it. When we flew back that night, I wanted to confess my feelings for Henry, but just as we got there, we were welcomed by Noah, Mr. Hampton, and a house full of guests. Everyone, meet Rose, the reason why we're celebrating tonight. What do you mean? While you were busy falling in love, I got the deal signed, and we are gonna demolish that precious planetarium of yours. But, but that, that's not fair. Too bad, life's not fair. Like it wasn't fair to me when he came over and took everything that was mine. Just when I thought you couldn't stoop any lower. My mind went spinning in a thousand directions, and suddenly I slapped Noah hard on his face. You are a horrible person, and I'm ashamed I ever called you my friend. I ran out of that place feeling crushed, but I had no time to sulk. Pops, I, and a few other people collected as much money as possible to hire a lawyer to file a motion. A few weeks later, Pops came to me with shocking news. I just got a call that the Hamptons are ready to give the planetarium back, along with a million dollars. What? That's amazing! But how? He handed me an anonymous letter that had all the details about exactly what had happened and how Noah had manipulated the situation. It was easy to guess who it was when I saw the handwriting. Henry. I called his office and his assistant told me that he'd left for Korea a week back. I'd lost him. When Pop saw me sulking later that night, he walked over and I told him everything. Go. Tell him how you feel. I hugged him and left for the airport. I reached Henry's grandmother's house and found him sitting on a bench in the grass. This view is so much better than your fancy office. Rose, what, what are you doing here? I got your letter. I just wanted to say thank you. You came all this way to say thank you? That's not wise. Wait. You're weird, stubborn, and a complete jerk. Are you trying to insult me? No, idiot. I'm trying to say I love you. I love you too. 